Live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE, covering Oracle Open World 2016. Brought to you by Oracle. Now, here's your host, John Furrier and Peter Burris. Hey, welcome back everyone. We are here live in San Francisco for theCUBE. This is SiliconANGLE Media's flagship program where we go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the co-CEO of SiliconANGLE Media with Peter Burris, head of research for SiliconANGLE Media. He's also the general manager of Wikibon Research. Check out wikibon.com for all the latest research in uh, cloud big data infrastructure. And we're at Oracle Open World 2016. And I'm excited to have our next guest, Don Johnson, VP of Engineering for product development for the infrastructure as a service for Oracle Cloud. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. Thanks for spending the time to come on, really appreciate it. Um, obviously Oracle's cloud last year was uh, obviously the announcement, they're marching to the cloud. A big building block in this was infrastructure as a service. They had the SaaS, the taking names, taking button there, and they're transforming. Platform as a service developing nicely, this year showed some progress. But the, the upgrade, if you will, or reboot or reset, however you want to call it, was fundamentally to introduce the new stuff with infrastructure as a service, yeah. to kind of round everything off. Um, give us the update, what's the key new news for infrastructure as a service and uh, why is it important? Uh, well, a couple things. Uh, let me start with your, the last part of your question, why is it important? So, very broadly, I would say there's kind of two strata of cloud. Um, there's cloud platform and there's everything that's up above, apps, SaaS, et cetera. Cloud platform, I think, is a big, it's a big category. It's broad spectrum, but it's IaaS and PaaS, and then there's lots of stuff that falls inside of there. IaaS is a fundamental and foundational building block, and all of the characteristics that everything up above uh, relies on or requires is basically enabled by infrastructure. If you want to run at massive scale, if you want network connectivity between place A and place B, if you want intrinsic security, that's all things that are foundational characteristics and you either have them or you don't based on whether infrastructure, IaaS, gives them to you. And so for us, for Oracle, um, we're, we're a cloud platform company. This is a foundational piece and we're investing in this um, very aggressively and we're driving in a very innovative direction on this, so. You've been at Amazon since 2005, just recently joined Oracle on the engineering side and you know, infrastructure right now we're seeing is a, is a cost and performance gain. Drive the cost down as low as possible while preserving scale and performance. Real critical and almost hardening the top, if you will. Creating a hardened infrastructure so that you can enable DevOps and some coolness around agility, all that good stuff above, on top of the cloud. So, so what's the key things this year that you guys filled in uh, in terms of product? I mean, what was the key uh, uh, innovations and on the development side, what was the key sure. sprint for you guys? Well, um, so what we've been announcing in IaaS is really uh, our next generation infrastructure, which is twofold. It is the infrastructure itself, uh, and what our data centers and networks and virtual network looks like, and then it's a new suite of products that we put on top of this, bare metal cloud services. Um, and this is the fruit of a big kind of back to basics uh, foundational exercise where we have gone and redesigned everything from the ground up. We've done it with a focus on a bunch of core uh, uh, core criteria, core things that we wanted to um, that we wanted to capture and that we wanted to do better, better than have been done in the industry to date. Um, and I would characterize those as twofold. First, we are bringing along all of the best characteristics of the cloud and why the cloud is compelling and what people uh, uh, use it for. Uh, Self-service, pay for what you use, it's elastic, it's easy to use, it's, uh, there's, there's low friction, it's high scale, et cetera. Um, but there's a number of things that for our core customer base actually are very challenging in moving to the cloud. Um, and when I say our core customer base, uh, if you have a large existing, you know, if you're an enterprise and you have a large existing uh, infrastructure and deployment, typically on premise, you have a lot of constraints and it's difficult to actually move into this new environment and take advantage of all that it has to offer. And um, there are, uh, this, this applies to uh, 
how your applications will run there, the assumptions that they make, uh, your security and controls. And so we've, had, we've identified a number of areas that we fundamentally wanted to do better than they've been done before. Um, security, uh, reliability, uh, governance, the ability to manage. If you're a large, complex organization, you have a large, complex footprint and deployment in the cloud, the ability to manage it. Uh, performance. Performance is a broad spectrum. Peak performance, raw performance, uh, predictable performance, and a particular price performance. You're talking about performance and cost. Uh, and sort of an adjunct to performance is the ability to harness modern technologies. Because if you look at where, you know, look at where storage is going, non-volatile RAM and technologies like Intel, Intel Crosspoint, how can you actually enable customers to get access to that and use it and harness what it what it offers? Um, very, very quickly, and and most uh, most of all, really flexibility, uh, sort of the choice. And what I mean by that is, when you're a cloud provider, you kind of pick a you pick a certain level at which you implement and define and build your abstractions, and then that has consequences in what choices you actually offer. So let me be a little bit more precise about this. Uh, a core thing that we did, sort of the keys, the, the special sauce in any cloud platform, uh, is the virtual network. And we made a fundamental choice that the way in which we're going to do the virtual network is to pull the virtualization into the network itself, where we think it belongs. So no hypervisor. It's not in the hypervisor. Yeah. And so what that means is first it means we're able to, like the, uh, the requirement that we have of something that we can plug into uh, our cloud, your cloud, your virtual network is, it has an ethernet port. This means that we can put, we can put anything into a virtualized network. Our whole infrastructure, you know, the presentation of customers is everything runs in a virtual overlay. It's all virtual network. But we could put any class of resource in there. We can do bare metal, we can do an engineered system, we can, honestly, we can take an arbitrary middle box from, you know, any third party vendor. Um, this lets us give our customers bare metal. Giving our customers bare metal means we can, we can take, so we, we provide bare metal uh, compute with uh, NVMe drives. They are phenomenal. There is nothing, like we're literally giving you a server in the cloud with a you know, provision in minutes paid by the hour. And you get, our, in, our, in our biggest shape, you get in excess of 4 million 4K read IOPS. Like this is phenomenal power. So really there's nothing that stands between us uh, between a technology and us giving it to you. So that was the key uh, design criteria then? That was a key design criteria. And so this, you know, in terms of sort of flexibility and preserving choice, this means, you know, principle you can bring any OS, you can bring any hypervisor. If you have some old stuff that's difficult to move, uh, yeah. you know, you, you, you can't bring up our hypervisor. So uh, you let, the, you let, the, you let the, the performance, everyone kind of speak for themselves, if you will. So yeah, just the customer can put anything on this thing. Yeah. And so. And, and, and these are phenomenally powerful boxes. Okay, so now how does that compare with Amazon and Azure? Because the number one question I get is, and, and I'd love to see if you can uh, put some color around this, is obviously Amazon had a different thing. You guys had a clean sheet of paper and we took smaller steps, computed storage and built services and scaled up there. Azure had kind of backed into it with their existing business and their portals and all their services and then now moving their customers on there. So number one question I get is, well, what's different with the IaaS on Oracle vis-a-vis -vis AWS and Microsoft Azure? How do you uh, answer that question? Is there um, a distinct difference? Is there a design philosophy? Is it a... Well, I, 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 the design philosophy um, for IaaS is what I was just articulating. And in essence, it, uh, it looks and acts uh, very, very similar from the perspective of the customer, the user experience at scale, um, as well as it preserves choice and flexibility and is amenable, basically, it's... it's uh, it is much more friendly to the large enterprise or large business that is outside of the, oftentimes and typically outside of the sweet spot of what an infrastructure like say Amazon was originally designed for. So as a, as a principle, we are trying to meet our customers where they're at, from they want to migrate over some apps and do it cautiously and maybe not change too much about them uh, and not see that as a constraint or an obstacle to get to all 
of the all of the uh, promise and power of uh, running modern applications in high scale, highly available. It, look, in many respects, in many respects, cloud is a is naturally a network centric compute model. Yes. By putting more. By, by not putting network virtualization above the network, but putting it into the network, does that also at some point in time give you greater flexibility, the option to bring even more of the Absolutely. core work that's done down into the network so that you can actually start liberating some of the power of a real network computing model. Others can't do that right now. So if you think about it, what kinds of applications might that make possible in the future, thinking about IoT, for example, the ability to use a network model to describe how work gets allocated within a cloud of services. Well, I, I think the uh, the network ultimately, what you needed to do, there's a few things you needed to do. You needed to very reliably and quickly move bits from place A to place B. Um, you needed to have the flexibility, sort of as a as a topology to be able to put things in. And um, you needed to uh, sort of preserve uh, uh, privacy and pluggability. So um, the fundamental thing that I see our virtual network uh, supporting and enabling is basically building up a fabric of services and uh, letting us say, so everyone runs in a private overlay. We want to uh, make it easy for any uh, provider, ourselves as, many, as well as any third party provider, to inject uh, microservices into your, uh, into your private network. We want to make it easy to be able to bring over um, traditional security controls uh, where um, you want to uh, set up bastions and set up taps and um, be able to introspect, uh, you know, do you know, traditional IDS, uh, IPS. So I, I, I see I see network virtualization really as an enabler of um, you know it's providing a fabric that lets you give so you John, great flexibility in wiring things together. I don't know if that answered your question. So final question for you: What's next? Yeah. So what's on the what's the priorities on the on the to-do list for you guys as you go down um, for there's uh, 2.5 or 2.1? Uh, they say Microsoft never make it an odd, an even number. Make it a you know yes. a 2.1 or 2.5 or 3.0. What's next? Um, there's a ton of things. So we're we're building out data centers in new geographies. We're we're going big. Um, we're going to add a ton of SKUs. We're going to make bigger things, smaller things. Uh, adding uh, a ton more features, uh, really all across the board. So I don't. I don't know that I see it as there's a, a 2.5. Uh, there's going to be a, a rapid pace. Of so more a slew of announcements, very similar to yes. the cadence we've been seeing at Oracle's. And Amazon traditionally has started That's that trend. Larry couldn't even finish the keynote on Sunday because the announcement stream yeah. was so large. No, we have a, we're, you'll, you'll see a, a constant string of releases on a, you know, a, a weekly, monthly, quarterly basis. There's just a ton of stuff coming. Um, we have a ton of features to add. We have a, a ton of uh, uh, interesting new services to add. Into so the pace is, is fast. You're running hard. The pace is very fast. Well, congratulations, and looking forward to following you guys uh, right. and your success. Love the agile mindset. Love to see that cadence of shipping stuff moving really, really fast. Uh, appreciate right. it. Good spending the time. Thank you very much. Sharing your insights. The Cube live here at Oracle Open World. You're watching the Cube back with more live coverage here in San Francisco after this short break.